One of the key elements of the functional aging training approach that we talked about is addressing all the impairment level factors and how in some people you can assume maybe that certain areas are fine when in fact they're not. And this is a, a, a good story of a client that I had that really shows that. So we'll call him Paul. Paul was a 79 year old. He was an ex-pilot. Uh, he was someone that came to me to train because he wanted to hike the world's longest cave in Vietnam. He had this opportunity to go hike this cave, which is several miles long, with his son-in-law and grandson. Opportunity of a lifetime, right? What a great experience. But because he was older, he was very concerned about his ability to make it through this hike all the way through the cave. In fact, before he even got to the cave, there were several miles of downhill hiking in order to get to the cave. And the people that were leading this little expedition who, who run it were very clear. They said, if you have trouble just getting down to the mouth of the cave, you will not be able to continue. You will be turned back, okay? And it was really their decision to determine that. So he was very concerned that he wasn't gonna be in shape enough to be able to make this trek and he would be turned back once he got to the mouth of the cave. So I started training him for that purpose. Well, I did a few fitness tests on him at the beginning and found out he's, uh, he's in pretty good shape. Uh, he had been exercising regularly uh, for many, many years uh, at home. Um, he was somebody who was very fit, especially for someone of that age um, and that we might think about. He was really decades younger than his chronological age. And so he had good strength and he had good power. He didn't really have any specific balance deficits to note. Uh, and so we started training. It wasn't too long into his training when I started to, I just started with some basics and as we started to expand, I started to do some movements that are more motor control coordination focused. And this is where his weaknesses really came to light. Can you karaoke? Well, he couldn't. I had him do the crossover stepping pattern. You know the karaoke. You're gonna move laterally, you're gonna move sideways, you're gonna step one foot in front of the other, then you step one foot behind the other, right? And you're gonna keep that pattern. Step in front, step behind, step in front, step behind. Completely blew his mind. I mean, he had, he had no clue how to do this. I, I was having him do it very slowly. I was telling him how to do it, step in front, step behind, step in front, step in behind. I gave him multiple demonstrations. He just couldn't do it. He would step in front and he'd hesitate and he'd step in front again. And then he'd step in front again and then finally he'd step behind. The pattern just completely blew his mind. So obviously a light bulb went off for me. I thought, okay, obviously this is an area that although we didn't assess it, has come up in our training that needs to be addressed. So I decided to do a little bit more of a formal test on him. So this is where I did the TikTok walking test on him. Now the TikTok walk, I, I really love this. It's, it's very simple to do. You're gonna have somebody walk straight, let's say down a hallway or across a room. And their goal is to walk straight, okay, in a normal gait pattern. But how you're gonna mix it up is whenever they step forward with the right foot, they're gonna move their head and their vision to the right to about two o'clock. Okay, so if this is 12 o'clock, they're gonna move it to two o'clock. And then when they step with their left foot, they're gonna move over to 10 o'clock. So they're literally kind of tick-tocking. They're, they're going tick, tock, tick, tock as they take steps. Their steps should be straightforward, crisp and clear, and their head should move crisp and clear, right? Well, again, no clue how to do this. Every time he stepped with his right foot, he wouldn't step forward, he would step out to the side because his head was pulling him out to the side, right? So he'd pull over this way and he'd pull over that way completely discombobulated. So again, realizing, wow, think about what this means for his trip to this cave, okay? Do you need to have stamina and strength? Yes, you do. Do you need to have cardiovascular endurance? Yes, you do. Balance for sure. But this cave is not only long, it has lots of different varieties of terrain and it's slick. So there are times when he has to step on very specific spots, rocks, in order to get across certain areas that might be even slippery. But think about it, you're in this beautiful cave, so what are you doing? You're stepping and you're looking, right? You're trying to look all around while you're stepping in different directions and you're even crossing over in different directions. So here are two things that I felt were critical for him to work on 
because I felt like that was gonna help him to be successful with this trip that he was going on. Remember function, when we talk about function, function is what? It's specific to the person and it's specific to the environment, okay, or the task that's at hand. Okay, so he was putting himself in an environment that is very unusual, okay, so that was gonna go beyond his capabilities because of the tasks that were gonna be required. I was very happy for Paul. Paul worked on this very diligently, and it was probably not two weeks of working on this where he got to where not only could he walk doing the karaoke, but he could do the fast karaoke, almost the running karaoke, very quickly. We worked on a number of different agility drills, he got better with those very quickly because he was very concerned about it and he was very diligent. So we improved very well. So another point that we always want to focus on is you make assumptions about what a person can do or not do. They might look like they're fit when they walk in the door, but until we kind of get into the testing and training, we're not going to really know what their capabilities are. So we don't want to make assumptions. And when those glaring deficiencies come up, then we can prioritize them in our training program. Now, I wish I could say there was an awesome ending to this story. Unfortunately, he went on the trip, they hiked down to the cave. He didn't have so much of a problem, but his son-in-law did. His son-in-law had some respiratory issues, had, was undergoing respiratory distress. So unfortunately, he never got into the cave. So, sad ending, but great story that he was able to go through that training and improve so well.